。好，二零一四年嘅第二条题目就系有关于人类嘅器官嘅内壁嘅。咁你見到呢幅圖啦，又畫埋兩條直線俾你啦，咁擺到明啦，就要我哋有個好習慣啦。咁多位同學之前做 M C 呢，都不斷提大家㗎啦。見到啲圖指咗啲結構俾你呢，你預咗佢問你個結構名或者結構嘅功能㗎啦。而今次正正 Part A 呢，就問你啦，叫你 label 返呢兩款細胞喎。咁就大條道理呢，要寫返個名啦。而 Part B 呢，就要我哋利用返呢幅圖啦，喺個器官內壁嘅一啲特徵。就有啲描述下，究竟器官內壁呢係如何去保護我哋，去免於細菌嘅入侵嘅。咁所以呢個題目呢，就考緊兩樣嘢啦。第一呢，就係器官內壁嘅結構，究竟呢兩個細胞叫咩名呢？第二啦，就係器官內壁嘅適應性特徵，就係將結構同埋功能拉上關係。而今次拉上嘅關係呢，就係身體防衞啦。而今次嘅身體防衞呢，係屬於非特異性嘅身體防衞。咁我先嚟 part A 啦，呢两款細胞，第一个就係纤毛上皮細胞，第二个呢就係黏液分泌細胞。所以你会发现呢，教科书係好好用嘅。你睇下呢幅图，直头同呢幅图係一模一样，不过佢係四百倍，佢係二百五十倍啫嘛。咁所以呢啲咁直白嘅题目呢，我希望呢两分大家係嚼硬嘅。去到 part B 啦，你有啲咩要答呢？第一啦，就係讲下气管内壁嘅一啲结构，就係呢两款細胞啦。佢有啲咩嘅特征呢？呢两款細胞嘅特征。同佢嘅功能有冇啲咩嘅關係呢？哦，會分泌黏液㗎喎、哦，啲黏液有咩用啊？哦，佢有啲纖毛，有啲毛毛，斯里亞㗎喎，啊、哦，啲斯里亞有啲咩用啊？而第三呢，我特別想提下嘅就好多同學呢都係漏答咗嘅，就係、是、將嗰啲細菌，當我哋黐住咗佢啦，掃走咗佢啦，究竟佢哋嘅最終命運係如何呢？又同我哋嘅非特異性身體防衞又有啲咩關係呢？所以一開始呢，就講返兩款細胞先啦，黏液嘅分泌細胞同埋我哋嘅絨毛啦。指出結構之後就講佢哋嘅功能喎。黏液分泌細胞分泌黏液，佢黐住吸入嚟嘅空氣入面嘅細菌啦、病原體啦，或者呢啲病菌嘅。而絨毛就將呢啲俾人 trap 住咗嘅細菌、病菌呢，就向住喉嚨去掃，用 sweep away 呢，你可以 sweep。towards 啦，或者 upwards， 因为佢一定系向上扫噶嘛，唔系扫完就算数，仲要 for swallowing 或者 coughing， 你一系就吞咗佢，一系就掠咗佢出嚟。咁除咗佢哋嘅基本功能之外咧，好多同学都忽略咗呢一点嘅，就系、是、上皮細胞咧，佢哋系好紧密咁。黐埋一齊嘅，咁所以啦，就能夠提供到一個物理嘅屏障，就唔俾細菌入侵啦。好，又嚟到一點出發嘅時間啦。今次嘅題目呢，就係問呼吸系統嘅。今次係先問我哋呼吸管道啦，又講下呢兩款細胞啦，黏液分泌細胞同埋呢個纖毛上皮細胞，佢哋各自有咩用處呢？咁除咗呼吸管道之外啦，佢都可以問下你有關於個氣囊啦，或者個肺泡啦，究竟啦佢哋對於個 gas exchange 氣體交換有咩嘅作用呢？咁但係直接問你作用呢，就。实在太简单啦，所以咧又系会问下你哋有关于适应性特征啦。今次就问翻呼吸管道嘅适应性特征同个身体防卫有咩关系？咁下一次啦就会问翻个气囊对于气体交换啦，究竟佢又有啲咩嘅适应性特征去帮助到我哋做一个气体嘅扩散呢？气囊咧嗰个上皮細胞就系好薄嘅，啊有咩用呢？个气囊入面有一浸水，啊有咩用呢？个气囊啦，系俾啲微血管去包住㗎喎。啊又有咩用呢？今次嘅题目呢，就系有关于非特异性防卫嘅。咁今次就系讲啲黏液黐住啲細菌，然后就攞个绒毛去扫扫扫扫扫扫去个咽喉嘅位置啦。咁但系下次可能问下你有关于炎性反应啦，佢都系属于非特异性嘅身体防卫嚟㗎喎。哦，咁但係炎性反应係咩意思呢？红肿痛熱究竟係點樣嚟嘅呢？而当中啦，又会对我哋嘅呼吸系统又有啲咩嘅负面影响呢 t w o one four question two is about the inner wall of the human trachea. So you can see this diagram, and also there are two structures for us to label. So I would like to remind you the good practice. No matter which type of question, MC question or a long question, once you see some structure, structure A, B, C or P, Q, R, S, you know that you have to label them or identify them first because the question may really ask you the name or ask you the particular function of the cells. So you can see that from plot A. You really need to label the cells shown in this photo micrograph. And for part B, with reference to the features of the inner wall shown in the photo micrograph, we need to describe how the inner wall of the trachea can protect our body against the bacterial infection. So you can see that 
the concept checking, we need to identify the structures of the inner wall of the trachea, the good practice. Secondly, we need to recall the adaptive features of the inner wall of the trachea. So we need to link the structure and functions together. And in this question, the functions is about the non-specific body defense. So let's talk about the part A. You can see the exactly the same diagram in the textbook. So you know the importance of using the textbook for revision. For this cell is the ciliated epithelial cell. And for this cell, it is the mucus secreting cells. And for part B, for the scaffolding, you need to recall the feature of the ciliated epithelial cells or they have the cilia. But what is the functions of the cilia? There are mucus secreting cells. Surely they secrete the mucus. But what is the function of the mucus? And for point number three, you need to mention swapping the dust and the germs with giving their fate. How can we protect our body? from the bacterial infection. So that's why you need to recall the concept of the non-specific body defense. Surely, you need to talk about the mucus secreting cell and the ciliated epithelial cell. Mucus secreting cell secretes the mucus, that's a function. But what's for the non-specific body defense? They trap the germs, pathogens, bacteria from the incoming air. For the ciliated epithelial cell, the cilia will sweep the trapped germs away to the throat or swept towards the furnace by the beating action of the cilia for us to swallow it or coughing it. So that's why you need to talk about the fate of the germs at the bacteria. Finally, most of you may miss it. Closely packed epithelial cells. They are closely packed and then it can act as the physical barrier to prevent the entry of the bacteria. So let's talk about the curricular mapping. This question starts from the respiratory system. In this question, it asks you about the respiratory tract to talk about the cells including ciliated epithelial cells and the mucus secreting cells. And apart from the respiratory tract, it can also ask you the alveoli, the air sac. So surely it can ask you about the gas exchange. But if the question simply asks you about the function, it will be very simple. So that's why it may ask you the adaptive features. Just like in this question, it asks you the adaptive features for the body defense. And what about for the alveoli? It may ask you the adaptive features for the gas exchange. For, for example, it may ask you the adaptive features of the air sac to help the diffusion of the gases for the gas exchange. For example, the epithelial cell of the air sac is one cell thick. So what's for? And there is a network of the capillaries surrounding the alveoli. So what's for? And there is a layer of the moist inside the air sac. So what's for? You need to talk about it. So in this question, apart from the physical barrier, so what about other type of non-specific body defense, such as the inflammation? The question may ask you that there is bacterial infection in the respiratory system. We need to talk about the inflammatory response. The infected area, it will become red, hot, swollen, and also you will feel the painful sensation. And you also need to talk about the side effect of the inflammation on the respiratory system. 